Good morning. My name is Bob Coom and I'm the Chancellor of the University of Denver and it's my pleasure to to welcome you uh, once again uh, to the Alumni Symposium at DU. I hope you're having a good time. I have to say this feels a little bit like teaching a large class because the first few rows are totally empty <laughs> and everybody's in the back there having a good time. Uh, it's a pleasure seeing you all. Uh, I love to come to these things because I see so many people uh, that I know well uh, who are so well engaged with the university. Uh, ordinarily, uh, when I speak uh, to you at you know, Saturday morning at the Alumni Symposium, I, I tell you a little bit about what's happening at the university and where we are. And it's a great time to do that because the fall quarter has just begun. <coughs> And if one is an academic, uh, the fall is just this very special time. I think we all feel that a little bit uh, from having been in school for a lot of years of our lives. But for those of us who are so fortunate as to make our lives uh, at a college or a university, the fall is just this extraordinary time uh, when it's as though you know, all of the detritus from the past year sort of falls away and we start again. It's a little bit like being kind of reborn. Uh, new students coming in the door, new tasks in front of us. Uh, the energy is amazing. All of the juices are flowing. It's just the most wonderful time of the year. And I hope you're feeling a little bit of that uh, in the course of your time here at the symposium of the excitement uh, of the fall term at the University of Denver. Uh, the weather's beautiful, the campus is absolutely glorious. I hope that you've had a chance to get out there and walk around the campus uh, a little bit. It's looking really great, uh, it's feeling really great. We have a couple of new things on campus that I hope you'll get a chance to, uh, to visit. Uh, the, uh, our new building for the Morgridge College of Education opened uh, just this summer. The faculty moved in this summer and they've started classes there this fall. It's uh, on the corner of Evans and High, so just on the edge of the campus over that way. Remarkable, remarkable new building that is there really to be the focal point, uh, a focal point uh, for all of the endeavors related to, to teaching and learning on this campus, but more to the point, the focal point uh, through which, a kind of a fulcrum, through which the intellectual capital of the university can be leveraged against all of those issues out there, all of those major reform issues like early childhood education or, or K-12 urban education, urban education and reform, access to higher ed, all of those kinds of things. That building is intended to be the place in Colorado uh, where the critical discussions happen. It's a, it's a remarkable building, hope you go visit it. Uh, a couple of other things that have happened that are different from last year. Up on the north side of campus, uh, we have opened, I know, at this time last year we were, we were opening our new soccer stadium uh, on the western side of the Ritchie Center. It was about half done, but we were gonna play a soccer game in front of it anyway. Uh, that's been finished, but uh, the really interesting thing, if you uh, go inside the Ritchie Center, underneath that soccer stadium is a new training facility for our, our varsity athletes uh, that uh, is named for Pat Bolin, who was the principal donor and, as you may know, is a, has been a member of our board for more than 20 years now uh, and helped us, uh, along with others, put that together. It's a pretty remarkable thing. Right next to it is a new building that is an annex to the Schwader Art Building. Uh, uh, called the Nagel Painting Studios. And it is uh, this interesting structure that looks like a, a part of the Ritchie Center, uh, but really is a part of the art school. Uh, it's a lot of open space, uh, studio space for all of the students we have who are working on painting there. Uh, all of those things are different uh, from when you were here last fall, so I do hope you get a chance to, to walk around the campus uh, and take a look at it. What we're doing, though, is, is really not so much anymore about building out the campus. We have a few projects of that kind, and a couple of more things we hope to do in the course of the next several years. But our focus is on people and programs, students, faculty, 
and the kinds of things we're able to do here uh, intellectually. I, uh, I ran into an alumnus a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he asked me, uh, you know, what's the, what's the most exciting thing going on at the University of Denver right now? And it's an interesting question because all of these things ran through my head uh, that had to do with physical facilities and, and uh, programs. We have a, a number of really exciting new programs going on. But what I responded to him was that, you know, the most exciting thing for me uh, really is uh, the kinds of students that we're attracting. It's the students that are at the University of Denver right now. I've been here for 29 years. This is, this is the beginning of my 30th academic year at DU, and most of that time has been spent teaching uh, undergraduate and graduate students and working in my research lab down in the chemistry department. And so I've, I've seen uh, lots and lots and lots of different kinds of students here. I've seen it uh, grow. Uh, the kinds of students that we are attracting today are truly extraordinary, truly extraordinary. Uh, this year, uh, we uh, have a class of uh, just over 1,200 uh, first-year undergraduates that you know, began about a month ago uh, that were called from about 12,500 applicants uh, to the University of Denver from all over the country and all over the world. And so these uh, are really quite remarkable people, however you cut it, uh, uh, in terms of their academic credentials. Uh, once again, this is the most capable class we have ever seen walk in the doors at DU. Uh, average high school GPA is about 3.7. Uh, average SAT is uh, about 12.10. ACTs are about 27. But those are, you know, I think what, half of them are in the upper 10% of their high school class. But that's just a little part of it. I mean, that's, those are, high school uh, credentials coming in, the kinds of things they have done with their lives are just remarkable, remarkable. The kinds of things they want to extract from their experience here at the University of Denver uh, are really extraordinary things. Uh, they are such active, enthusiastic, engaged people that it's very hard not to be excited about them. Uh, about what the institution is likely to be and what it's likely to become during the course of their, of their time here. We are still a majority graduate student uh, institution, so uh, as of uh, this month, we have about 5,000 undergraduates, which is actually uh, more than we would like. You know, we keep trying to hold it down, but it keeps creeping up because our persistence numbers keep increasing. Uh, and our graduation rates keep increasing. About, about 5,000 undergraduate students and about 6,400 uh, graduate students at this point. Uh, a really remarkable number. Uh, graduate students' uh, enrollment is up as well. Both undergraduate and graduate student enrollments are up about almost 3% over budget. Uh, so uh, there are more students in, than we expected to be here, but the good news is that the quality capability of those students has increased uh, across the board. Uh, among graduate students, whether we're talking about students doing their MBAs and master's degrees in Daniels or the students entering the law school uh, this fall or students in Corbell or in the Mortgage College or GSSW, whatever, however you cut it, uh, the standards are, continue to rise and rise and that has that has a palpable effect on the atmosphere and the environment of the university. I must tell you that the, the depth of the intellectual culture here is something really quite remarkable now for someone who spent most of his life teaching. It is just such a gratifying thing uh, to see uh, that uh, the intellectual life at the University of Denver is is such a deep and such a rewarding thing now. And it is really that, the collection of all of these people together and the, their, their interest level, uh, their ability level, that is a kind of magnet for more people just like them. And so we are on this trajectory in the sense of the, uh, our, the kinds of students, undergraduates and graduates that we are attracting that is just heading straight up, heading straight up. That's why our application numbers are going straight up. Uh, you know, 
Five years ago, five years ago, we had 5,000 applications for the undergraduate class. This, this fall, as I said, we had 12,500 applications for the undergraduate class. Now, uh, applications nationally are going up, but we are double, double to triple the rate at which that increase is going on. DU is very, very hot indeed across the country. We're also doing better at recruiting international students. We have more than 1,000 international students on the DU campus this fall. Uh, split roughly a third undergraduates, two-third graduate students. So of this fall's entering class of undergraduate students, uh, nearly 8% are from abroad. Uh, almost, it's a, a little over 19% are uh, students of color, domestic minority students as well. So uh, even as the class uh, uh, becomes more and more capable in an academic sense, it also becomes more and more diverse as well. That is having a definite effect on the environment at DU as well. I think we are, we are becoming a really quite uh, diverse institution made up, uh, in diversity broadly defined, not just racial and ethnic diversity or geographic diversity or diversity of national origin, but in many, many, many dimensions. Uh, in terms of the, the background and experience of our students, in terms of their uh, political beliefs, the uh, spectrum of, of religions that are uh, represented here, it is just a, a remarkable thing. To me, all of that is the most exciting thing that's going on at DU today. It's the most important thing that is going on at DU today because what we do, principally, is sharpen up the minds of those students through our educational programs, and we deepen their values and commitments, help them define who they are through the culture of the university, through the set of experiences that they have here. And so our mission is really defined by the kinds of people that are walking out the door uh, after that undergraduate experience or that graduate program. It's really important that we have these extraordinarily capable, extraordinarily, diver uh, extraordinarily diverse group of students coming in the door, uh, but really what matters is who's leaving. Uh, and I think you can see by just simply looking around today uh, the kinds of people that are alumni uh, of the University of Denver. Uh, the students that are graduating today, you would be really, really proud of, really proud of the students who are graduating from DU today uh, uh, in the sense of what their capabilities are, but also in the sense of the manner in which they're going to lead their lives, the things they are choosing to do with their lives to make a difference in this world. I'll speak just a little bit about uh, uh, programs as well. We're very proud of our undergraduate program, and I've talked with you uh, at great length about that before. Uh, it's, I, I will tell you, uh, no matter what sort of rankings uh, you look out, out there, I would put our undergraduate program up against anyone, anyone in this country. I believe that uh, deeply uh, after having seen lots and lots of them, after knowing uh, faculty and administrators at a lot of the best universities in the United States. I believe ours is as good or better than any uh, that are out there in the sense of what we do for our students. The focus of what we're doing these days uh, has shifted some. We've spent the last several years working on the undergraduate program, and now we've kind of shifted to move into a focus on our graduate programs. Uh, we are working hard at uh, Daniels and at the law school and at the Corbell School of International Studies and at the Mortgage College and at GSSW and this raft of graduate professional schools uh, that we have at DU that really forms the majority uh, of our students. We are, uh, as you may know, uh, we've been actively trying to shrink the uh, College of Law, the Sturm College of Law. This is their home that we're in today. Uh, because we uh, believed it had gotten to be too big. And we've succeeded at that. Uh, so we have a much smaller uh, student population by design uh, in our law school. We've been growing the faculty here. We've added, uh, we've committed to add 10 new faculty positions uh, to the College of Law uh, such that uh, their student to faculty ratio will come uh, way down. 
the law school is a place where we have uh, an opportunity uh, to become uh, one of the very best uh, in the country, and I believe that. The focal points, uh, the law school faculty just did a new strategic plan focused on some of their real strengths, uh, uh, which you may know about. Uh, this school that we're in today is w uh, without question one of the finest in the country uh, when it comes to natural resource and environmental law. It's very strong indeed in international law. Uh, it has a really good uh, program in uh, employment law that's extraordinarily important these days and in business law some great things going on here and I think you'll see the law school really making a move forward. Daniels, uh, I'm sure a lot of you are alumni from Daniels. Uh, Daniels has gotten too big as well and so we've been actively shrinking that on the undergraduate side. You know, Daniels got to the point where uh, 40 to 45 percent of all of our undergraduates were studying business uh, and you know, that's perfectly okay. It's a wonderful thing to be studying, but Daniels was a little bit out of balance internally because of those numbers. Our faculty were shifting from the graduate programs over to the undergraduate program simply to accommodate that. And uh, so uh, we have uh, uh, instituted a secondary admissions process for undergraduates in Daniels. So students who are interested there uh, are now going to be admitted to the business programs here the end of their uh, first year as they become sophomores. Uh, and actually we've been able to kind of work this issue as well in admissions so that the numbers of students that we're admitting that are uh, moving toward business is also smaller proportionately as well. Uh, among undergraduates interests are increasing, so we're shrinking the number of business students but interests are in increasing in, in the sciences and in international studies and in engineering. A lot of great things going on at Daniels. The graduate programs are growing some. Uh, the faculty there has also just done a new strategic plan uh, that sets the strategic directions for the coming years. Uh, and we're very proud of them. One of the major things going on in the Daniels College is that uh, we're in the midst of this really quite substantial turnover in faculty there. A lot of the faculty that you knew when you were alumni uh, and no matter when it was that you graduated from DU, when you were students here rather, no matter when it was you graduated from DU, are still there. And so we're in this sort of, we're about a third of the way through a sort of a wave of retirements uh, that are going on in Daniels. And so uh, it's, it's a sad thing to see because a lot of my old friends are, are choosing to retire now, but uh, it's an interesting time as well because there are so many new faculty uh, hires going on there. We, uh, we are adding 13 new faculty positions in Daniels in addition to uh, this turnover that's happening uh, in the faculty. I'm sure you've read a lot about the Corbell School. Uh, the Corbell School is, uh, continues to be ranked 10th, 11th, 12th in the world uh, by uh, virtually anybody who's out there. Uh, really an extraordinary place. We hired a new dean. Who, who started this fall, Tom Ferrer, who was the dean uh, in international studies for the last 14 years and really guided that school to this position of preeminence uh, that it occupies now, uh, is retiring. Well, actually, he's not retiring. He's retiring from the deanship and becoming a university professor. So he'll teach and write. Uh, but we hired an extraordinary person to be the new dean in Corbell, uh, whose name you may know. He is Chris Hill. Uh, who is a career uh, diplomat, one of the top two or three diplomats in the United States, uh, without question. Uh, up until the 12th of August, he was the United States ambassador to Iraq. Uh, before that, he was the ambassador to Korea. Uh, before that, Poland and Macedonia. He was the leader of the U.S. side in the six-party talks over nuclear issues in North Korea. And he was also the principal in the negotiate for the United States in the negotiations at Kosovo. Uh, really extraordinary man. Uh, precisely the sort of career for which we are training our students in the Corbell School. Uh, and that's why he's going to be a terrific uh, dean there. Uh, the Mortgage College we spoke about uh, and its role 
uh, it is surging as well. Uh, there are more than 850 graduate st students in the Mortgage College of Education now. And it really is becoming the place uh, with regard to educational reform uh, in the state of Colorado by intent. That is the place that we have been directing it. Uh, great things going on in the Graduate School of uh, Social Work uh, with Dean James Herbert Williams, a number of new endowed chairs uh, for our faculty there, uh, which is a very pleasing thing to see. And a lot of great work in social work. Social work has done a lot of great things with regard to uh, families and children through the Butler Institute. Uh, uh, it's done a lot of things with regard to aging in the Gerontology Institute, but it also has a new program that's been funded by the American Humane Association that has to do with animal-human interactions and how those are used uh, therapeutically. Um, uh, we have a new endowed chair there, uh, Frank Eschione, who is a remarkable, uh, remarkable scholar. Let me raise just one last thing. Uh, if I may, before going on a bit, uh, uh, we have a new center on aging, uh, which is something we've been thinking about for quite some time. Uh, it's a truly interdisciplinary, uh, interdisciplinary sort of initiative uh, that began with the acquisition of the Eleanor Roosevelt Institute. Some of you may remember that uh, six years ago now. That was really the kernel of this. It began in the sciences, my home, uh, in molecular biology, biochemistry, uh, that we have moved uh, toward biomedical science with the acquisition of the Roosevelt Institute. Uh, what we've done there is to focus the activity of ERI, but also a collection of about a dozen uh, faculty members in biology, chemistry, physics, uh, and engineering. Uh, on issues related to aging and neurodegenerative diseases. Uh, some of you went to the class on Alzheimer's yesterday, I know. The university has developed a real uh, solid core, a uh, capability among us, the interdisciplinary group of faculty to study those kinds of things, Alzheimer's, ALS, autism, neurodegenerative diseases of that kind. We have coupled that with uh, what we're doing in the social sciences, in the Graduate School of Social, social Work, in the Institute for Gerontology, where we are studying issues associated with aging in America as well, and have been for a long time. That's being coupled with what we're doing in the law school, in the business school, uh, that are focused on, uh, on business and social issues, business and legal issues related to uh, the aging population in America. And so we have this really quite large enterprise that draws from the strengths uh, at DU, uh, within DU, that is focused on an interdisciplinary approach to these issues. Uh, it's coupled with our partnership with uh, Denver Health uh, as well, has drawn in engineering, and it is the only such institute of its kind in the entire Rocky Mountain region. This is not being done anywhere else. Uh, and really, when you think about it, it can only be done by an institute like ours. Uh, we recently received uh, this extraordinary gift in support of this uh, uh, $17.5 million gift from Betty uh, Noble, $10 million of which will be uh, used in support of this Center uh, for Aging. So extraordinary things going on at DU, both in the sense of, of the people that we have here, students and faculty, but also in the sense of the new programs that we are developing. The, the quality of the instructional enterprise, the depth of the intellectual enterprise is just surging here, just absolutely surging. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to see and to be a part of. Let me end with just a few words about where we are financially. Uh, the bottom line is we're in great shape. Uh, financially, uh, we have come through this period of the last couple of years uh, remarkably well, and I think that is a, a tribute uh, to all of those who have worked so hard here over the course of the last 20 years, really, to develop uh, financial strength at DU. Uh, our endowment, uh, which went, you know, substantially down uh, in the crash of 08, has come almost all the way back up to where it was when we began. 
Uh, and, uh, but more to the point, operationally, operationally we have uh, remarkable strength here. Our liquidity is great, our cash position is great. Uh, it's enabled us to move funds uh, into support for our students. I think I remember telling you last year about the fact that we were able to push several million dollars into emergency financial aid for students at, and their families at the height of the recession. And that, uh, that speaks to really the kind of flexibility that we have financially here that we have uh, really never had before. Uh, throughout, through this, you know, one of the things that happened in the course of this recession was that our bond ratings went up uh, because of, uh, the, of the financial position that we'd established here. But we were able to, you know, uh, walk into that financial headwind of the, of the recession very briskly indeed, and um, uh, really established ourselves uh, uh, as one of the few institutions in the United States that we're, we're really quite able to do that. So it's a great time to be here. Where we are now uh, is we're coming out of this in a position of uh, pretty, pretty terrific uh, competitive advantage relative to lots of other institutions. It's a time uh, when DU can really, really leap forward. Uh, both because of the kinds of, of things I was speaking about earlier, the students that are coming here, the faculty we're attracting, the kinds of programs we're doing, but also because of the fact that financially we are so solid, uh, even in you know, coming out of this recession, that we are primed for this extraordinarily leap, extraordinary leap forward. And that's the reason that uh, we're going public, uh, we're going into the public phase of the uh, campaign for DU that, uh, that Jeff spoke about last night, that's called Ascend, the campaign for the University of Denver. Uh, the, that campaign, which you'll hear about at the end of this month, uh, public announcement is October the 26th, uh, we'll run from now to our 150th birthday in 2014, so for the next four years. And it's really about two things. Uh, it's about uh, a focus on the excellence of the academic enterprise here. Uh, it's about people, students, and faculty, and really taking this giant step forward in terms of the absolute quality of the academic and intellectual enterprise at the University of Denver. Uh, the second thing is, is it's about, at last, after all of these 147 years, uh, establishing ourselves in a financial sense so that we have uh, indefinite stability throughout uh, the future, that such that we are not dependent on large tuition rate increases and we are not dependent on getting bigger every year, which we're not going to do. All of those things are within our grasp. They really are uh, in the coming years. I, I can't think of a more exciting time uh, to be at the University of Denver. Every now and again, I have to pinch myself uh, uh, thinking that I get to be the chancellor of this place at this particular time when there are so many opportunities out in front of us. I'm a, I am a fortunate, fortunate man uh, indeed. I, I think I have the best job in higher education in the United States. So, uh, welcome. I uh, hope you're enjoying uh, your classes in the symposium. Uh, you know, we couldn't do all of this stuff without you. Uh, I keep telling people that when we say university community, we're talking about far more than just the students and faculty on campus. We're talking about all 115,000 of us uh, that incorporates the entirety of the alumni community. Thank you so much for being here at the symposium, but, but more to the point for everything that you do for the University of Denver. Thank you.